Hello you wonderful people, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the Mux video uploader to Strappy from Mux, then we're going to see how we could set up everything in the Mux backend on their website, and more importantly, we're going to see how we could manage our Mux videos inside a Strappy application and create a Next.js project which is going to go ahead, get our videos from Strappy and show them on our website. So now let's go ahead, set up our Mux video upload provider with Strapi. You will need to have a Mux account that we'll set up together. You would also need a Strapi instance running, which we'll quickly set up as well. And for development, you will need to use a webhook relay to make the application work locally. In production, this is not an issue, but I'll cover all the steps that you need to get you started. So first things first, let's create our first Strapi instance. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in and I'm going to call my project Mux Demo and we're going to start it with our quick start flag. Click enter. We're gonna go ahead and click skip since we're not using Strapi Cloud at the moment. Once all the dependencies are installed, your application will start automatically. Let's go ahead and create our first admin user. I'm gonna say Paul Bratz, paul.bratzlavsky at strapi.io and the most secure password obviously is monkey1234 and make sure that you type it correctly and click enter. And now you're greeted with your dashboard. If we go to our marketplace, you can search for the Mux plugin and you could copy the install command. In my terminal, I'm gonna stop the server and make sure that you navigate into your Strapi project. I'm gonna clear the screen and I'm gonna paste the Mux uploader install command and click enter. While this is installing, you could click more to take a look at the Mux video upload Strapi marketplace page and take a look at all the steps that you need to complete. This walks us through the features, the install process and the requirements. So we will need to have an access token and a secret key as well as follow some configuration steps. When configuring the webhook, I'm gonna show you the workaround when working locally, we are going to use the SME tool to help us accomplish that, which is not something you have to do in production. And you could read more about the plugin on their page, but I'm gonna cover all the important things. So now that my plugin installed, to make sure that everything works, we're gonna clear out the original cache and the build folder. Then I'm gonna type yarn build and yarn develop to restart our Strapi instance. Once a Strapi application restarts, you're going to see this Mux video uploader menu item, which is gonna ask you to complete the following setup. We could click on go to settings to see all the fields that we need. The most important things that we need to get started is our access token ID, our access token secret, and our webhook signing secret. That could be anything that we type here. And now let's take a look where we could find all that information. I'm gonna go back to my Mux website, which you could find at mux.com, and I'm gonna click sign up. You could go ahead and choose how you wanna create your user. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with Google. I'm gonna select my strappy.io account and click create account. I'm gonna select the first option because that's how I'm gonna use it and click get started. Because we're using our free tier, we're going to have a pop-up here asking us to upgrade, but that's not necessary for this demo. And we're gonna to navigate to our settings and click access tokens. We're first going to create our first access token. So let's say generate new, and you wanna select development Mux video and click generate token. We will have our access token ID and our secret key. I'm gonna go ahead and copy my ID. And in our Strapi instance, this is where I'm going to paste my token ID. Next, I'm gonna copy my secret key and in my Strapi instance, paste my secret key. Now we're going to go back to Mux, click continue, and we're gonna click on webhooks. We will need to generate a webhook, but before we do that, let me show you the pattern that we need to use. Back at Mux video upload Strapi marketplace page, we're gonna scroll down and we're going to see the instructions for the webhook. We need to use our Strapi base URL followed by this path. Back at Mux, I'm gonna select development, create a new webhook, and I'm gonna say HTTP local host 1337 and the provider. Now for development, this is not gonna work because Mux is not able to contact our local machine. So instead of doing this, I'm gonna show you the workaround that we wanna use. We still wanna save this hook, but we're going to do a redirect. And we are able to accomplish this by using SME.io. So navigate to SME.io website, click on start new channel. This is gonna go ahead and give you your URL. 
So we're gonna go ahead, copy this URL, and this is gonna be our proxy URL. So under mock setting for development purposes, we're going to use the proxy. Go ahead, click paste and click create webhook. You will have your signing secret. You could go ahead and copy it. And inside your mock video settings, go ahead and paste it in and click save. All the items will disappear this way. So you don't leak any of your private information if somebody's looking at this but know that your settings are there. If you go back to Mux Video Uploader, you'll see that we're now able to upload new videos. But before we could do that, we need to finish setting up SME. The easiest way is to install SME locally on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my server, clear the screen, and now I'm going to install the SME client globally. Once everything is installed, we're going to want to start our SME server. So I'm gonna copy this command. And what we want is to have our SME relay point to our local Strapi project using the T flag. I'm gonna go ahead and paste my local URL webhook endpoint and click enter. You're gonna see that we're now forwarding our SME redirect to our local host. And you could see that it's connected. I'm gonna let this keep running, but in a new tab, I'm gonna restart my Strapi project by running yarn develop. I'm gonna navigate back to the SME tab so we could see what is happening. Now that everything is connected, back in my Strapi admin, I should be able to upload a new asset. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, say test, choose a file. And I'm gonna go ahead and find a video and select it and click save. You're gonna see that it's uploading my file to Mux. Now that everything is uploaded, let's click finish. You know that the web hook is working properly because you could see the playback here. And if you take a look at our SME server running, you could see that we get a 200, letting us know that everything is working as accordingly. And you could check your Mux dashboard, make sure that you select development because that's the environment that we're using and you're going to see the video that we uploaded. So now in Strapi Admin, I'm able to create a content type that is able to reference the Mux video that we just uploaded. So let me go to the content type builder and I'm going to create a new collection type and we're going to call it lesson, click continue. And we're just gonna add the title, add another field, and it's going to be a relationship and it's going to point to our Mux Asset video uploader. I'm gonna click Finish and Save. Now I'm able to go to my Content Manager, create a new lesson, first lesson, and here we could see our test video. I'm gonna add it and save. After we add our relationship, let's go ahead and publish our content. Next, let's navigate to Settings under Users Permission Plugin under Roles. We're gonna go Public, and we're going to select for our lessons. We wanna find and find one. And lastly, let's navigate to the Mux Video Uploader and enable Find and Find One and click Save. And in Insomnia, I'm gonna make a request to our Lessons Endpoint using Populate All, click Send, and now you should be able to see your video that we uploaded earlier to Mux. And in order to reference your video on the front end, you can go ahead and use this playback ID. And in the front end of your project, you can go ahead and install the Mux React player that allows you to reference your video by play ID and show your video to your front end users. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We're going to use Next.js for this example. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command. In my terminal, I'm gonna open up a new shell window and we're gonna CD one level out and create our front end with our Next.js project. I'm gonna call it front mux player and we'll just say yes, 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 yes. Let's do ls cd into our front mux player project and open it in VS Code. Let's pick a nice color and navigate to source into our page folder and we're just gonna nuke all the code between the main and just have a regular div and we'll say show a mux video. Now let's go to global CSS and let's delete all this unnecessary styling. And back in our page, we're gonna make this function uh, sync so we could load our strappy data. I'm gonna create a, a sync function called loader. And inside here, we're gonna do a try catch. And we're just gonna make a simple fetch request. So we're gonna say const base URL is going to equal 
HTTP local host 1337. This is where our Strapi is running our path. And that's going to be API slash lessons. And now we're going to create a new URL equals new URL, which is going to take our path and base URL. And we're going to add our search, which is going to be URL dot search. And we're going to set it to our populate flag. And next, we're going to await our response equals await fetch. And we're going to provide our URL dot href. And then we're just going to wait. And for now, we're going to console dot log our JSON to make sure that we're getting our data. And if not, we're going to just console log an error inside our home component. Let's do const data equals await loader. And we could const log our data here. And let's check it out by starting our Next.js project. So here I'm going to run yarn dev. Let's take a look at our project. So show mock's video here. Let's see if we're getting our data from Strapi. So it looks like we're getting data. Since we know we're getting the data, let me remove this extra console log and return our JSON. And we're going to go ahead, console log our data here. In order to get a better view of our data, we could do console dir and do depth of null. Now let's refresh and take a look. And here you could see that we are getting our data showing our video. So now let's get this data and iterate through it. So here I am going to do a very basic check. If no data, we're going to return null. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and iterate through our data just so we could display it to the screen. So here we could see we're getting our first lesson that works. And under our video data slash attributes, we have our asset ID. So let's make sure we get it. So let's change this to the bracket here like this. And inside here, we're going to say return. But before we do that, we're going to destructure our lesson to get our video data, which is coming from our attributes slash video data slash attributes. So let's do video data dot attributes. And what we're actually destructuring is our asset ID. So let's make this an H2. And then in the paragraph tag, let's see if we could see our asset ID. Perfect. We're getting our lesson. We're getting our asset ID. So the last step, let's go ahead, install our Mux video player. So we're going to use this code here. I'm going to copy. I'm going to stop my terminal. And I'm going to do yarn add to add the Mux player. And then run yarn dev to restart our project. So now inside VS Code, inside source, I'm going to create a new folder called components. And we're going to create a new file, which is going to be called video player.tsx. And I'm assuming that the Mux player is using client. So we're going to use use client directive. And we're going to export a function called video player that's going to take an asset ID. This function is going to return our Mux player. So we actually want playback ID. So let's go ahead and call it playback ID. Playback ID is going to be a, a string. Let's go ahead and say playback ID. Now, finally, let's import our Mux player. Yeah, and my VS Code always complains. So if you make this read only, it's going to stop complaining. TypeScript for you. So now let's go ahead and import our video player that we could use. And we don't want an asset ID. We instead want playback ID. So let's quickly do a refactor. So here, instead of the structure and asset ID, we're going to do playback ID. Everything should still work. And finally, let's import our video player. And here, we're going to return our video player passing video playback ID. Moment of truth. And bam, this is working. So now let's try uploading another video. Let's upload a new video, upload new assets. I'm going to say test two. choose a file. I'm going to upload this test movie, click open, click save. Once everything's uploaded, let's go to our content manager. Let's create a new lesson. I'm going to call this lesson two. add our second video. I don't know why called it test W, save and publish. 
And now when we go back to our next JS application and refresh, we should have our first video. And now here we should have our second video and Jesus Christ, I was too skinny back then. But now you know how to install the Mux plugin and consume your content in your Next.js project. And thanks for watching this video. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Give Mux a try with the Next.js project. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.